What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back. This is going to be another podcast segment. Just going to rant on a few topics trending in the news right now. One of them is absolutely tragic. Brazilian jiu-jitsu legend Leandro Lowe shot and killed in Brazil. I will touch on that, uh, drop my thoughts on that sad situation, tragic situation. Anthony Smith says that he expected more from Ankalaev. And Tony Ferguson finds a new training gym, a new team to anchor down with, which I think is great. That's great for Tony. All right, first let's start with the um, absolutely tragic killing of Leandro Lowe. He was only 33 years old. Uh, That is super young. You have so much more to offer, so much more to live in life. He was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion. By all accounts, one of the best to ever compete. The outpouring by the BJJ community, the mixed martial arts community, is very telling of what kind of person and individual he was. So this incident occurred, from what I'm reading, in a nightclub. The suspect is a police officer in Brazil. And I guess what happened was, is the suspect, the police officer, grabbed a bottle of alcohol from a table where Leandro was sitting at. Or an area he was hanging out at. There was an altercation. Leandro takes him down. Subdues him. Holds him for a bit. Then when he releases him and gets up. This individual, the police officer. Shoots him in the head. Just like that. Shoots him dead. Takes his life. Now when I read and I hear stories like this. It's puzzling to me. It's confusing. It's very sad that somebody could lose their life over something so trivial and stupid and that somebody could be so ignorant and stupid to kill somebody over some dumb altercation in a club. Now, it sounds like the police officer was a jerk. He deserved to get embarrassed. And it's like, maybe I'm old fashioned, but what happened to taking your leggings, getting up, dusting yourself off? Shaking the other man's hand if they whoop on you, especially if you deserve it. And everybody goes home in one piece and alive. I read some comments out there. People are like, oh, it's a street fight. Anything goes in the street. Yep, that's true. That's probably why you should avoid fighting in the street, fighting in clubs, because people have no honor. They're cowards. They will pull out a knife on you, a gun. If you're fighting them hand to hand and beating them, I'm sorry, that is cowardly. There is absolutely no honor in pulling a weapon when somebody's unarmed. And you're going to kill somebody when basically all they did was embarrass you and, and beat you up at worst. That doesn't warrant killing somebody, taking their life. So you ended one man's life by all accounts, a great human being. You cause so much suffering and pain in his family over what your pride your ego because you got a bad temper i hope they throw the book at this man i hope he never sees the light of day i'm sure there has to be court proceedings but if he is indeed guilty of everything that i'm reading and it went down exactly how it's being put out there in the media throw him under the jail i don't think the guy is going to make it to be honest because leandro was very beloved This incident is making its rounds all over the place, all over the world, really. I don't think he's going to make it too far. Let's just leave it at that. Rest in peace, Leandro Lowe. Super tragic. Condolences to his family and his close friends. And to everybody listening, be careful out there. There's a lot of crazy people with absolutely no honor and no moral compass. Now, moving on to Anthony Smith's comments on Megamed Ankalaev. He basically stated that he wasn't impressed with his skills, that he was surprised at how easy the fight was going. Not word for word, but that's pretty much the gist of what he was saying. Now, for those of you who don't know, Anthony Smith actually broke his leg in the fight. Megamed Ankalaev won by KOTKO in the second round. So what are my thoughts on Smith's comments? Well, he would know more than me or anybody else. He was the one in that cage with Megamed Ankalaev. Of course, his opinion might be biased. Sometimes it could be like an ego or pride thing. The fact remains that he lost, whatever the case may be. He did break his leg. 
I do believe that was a factor, 100%. But he broke his leg facing Magomed Ankalaev. So it's a clean win. Magomed Ankalaev won. I wouldn't be mad if they've run it back at some point. I think Anthony Smith is a super talented fighter. I think he could reach greater heights with focus, the correct training. Smith is that good, but so is Magomed Ankalaev. I think this might be Magomed Ankalaev's time. Smith might be slowly getting past it. Can't really say for sure. And it's not an age thing. It's just that I see Magomed Ankalaev on the come up and it's possible that Anthony Smith is on a decline. So fair enough by Anthony Smith. Those are his feelings. I'm sure Magomed Ankalaev has his opinions. There is no doubt in my mind that he wholeheartedly disagrees. I'm sure that he thinks he beat Anthony Smith fair and square and that it was an easy fight for him. And he's entitled to his opinion. Nobody can really dispute how he feels about that. Because again, he was in that cage and so was Anthony Smith. Moving on, moving on. Third topic. Tony Ferguson finally finds a gym to settle in with to improve his skills. I think it took him like two and a half years. He's been on this search and he finally landed at Jackson Wink. You know what I think? I think it's incredible that Tony Ferguson has the wisdom at his age and at this run, this point in his career to change it up, kind of be the small fish in a big pond. Not really, but new settings going by other methods, how other coaches do things, having people analyze, look at his game, possibly make adjustments and improvements, work with new people. I think that's super humbling and all credit to Tony Ferguson. I think it's a great move. I don't necessarily think Tony Ferguson is done done. I've said this before. He was doing quite well against Michael Chandler. Up until that knockout, of course. Before that fight, I may have been doubting Tony. Tony looked off to me. He looked slower. He was getting dominated pretty much in his last few fights. But in all fairness, look at the competition. Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira, Benil Darius, Michael Chandler's no pushover. But in that Chandler fight, Tony looked good, man. Tony looked good. Reflexes were there. He had speed. His timing was good. Tony's always heavy handed and he was putting it on Chandler. It wasn't looking good for Michael Chandler. Chandler makes the adjustments. Of course, Chandler got that win fair and square. I'm not going to say that was a lucky kick. He set it up. He threw it out there, landed it, did the unthinkable, put Tony's lights out. Now, as far as like gyms, your career, skill sets, skills, sometimes guys could get stagnant. Things get monotonous. You get bored. You need another set of eyes, different minds for fighting to take a look at your game, critique you, make adjustments, fine tune things. It's a little bit late in the game to reinvent Tony Ferguson's game, but there could be tweaks that could refine his game at this point that can make him more dangerous at this stage in his career. So props to Tony. I wish him the best. I just did a breakdown for Ferguson versus Hooker. Who knows? Maybe that fight will be booked. I think it's a great fight. I think it's a very fair fight. We get to see where both of these guys are at. I wouldn't be mad if they book it. But props to Tony for being humble enough to make these changes, to be daring enough to do this and try to improve. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this short podcast segment. Nothing fancy, just ranting. Hope you enjoyed the listen. If you did first time at the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. Like and share the video to show support. Appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys on the next segment. Everyone, please take care. Later, guys.